What is going on everybody, Captain Horn 23 here, and today we're going to learn all about the autopilot in the Airbus A320neo in the brand new Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Before we begin guys, if you would like to see more Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 content, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you know whenever I post a new video. Also, don't forget that I do have a Discord server, the link is in the description, here you can find other people to fly with in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, or if you have any questions, feel free to ask there. And you can also fly with me, so the link is in the description. Let's get right into this All video, right, here guys. here we are in the captain's seat of the Airbus A320neo, and I am leveled off at 15,000 feet. Now, the autopilot in the Airbus is actually really simple to handle, and we're going to go through it step by step. Now, the first thing you need to know is the autopilot is located right here in the middle of the aircraft. Right here, this panel right here. And we have some knobs that we're going to go over and some different icons that we're going to go over. Now, um, this the autopilot can be a little complicated. It depends if you have a route input, which I do not. So I'm going to go over the autopilot without a route. See if I get to my flight plan page down here in the MCDU. I have no flight plan. All right, and um, that is a bug right there. It says I'm going zero, and it jumps right back up. But anyway, um, so the autopilot is right here in the middle. Now we're going to go left to right. So starting with this right here, this button right here is just it'll switch your speed to Mach unit. So if I press this, it goes to Mach. Now I generally always leave it on speed. So 322 is my speed right now. The knob right under that is your speed, um, at whatever speed you would like to go. So of course, if I decrease this, if I could zoom out, if I decrease this knob, then it's not going to move. Now why is that? Well, on the Airbus, you can press these knobs either in or you can pull them out. And the way that's simulated is by wherever your mouse is located over the knob. So if I press or if I hold my mouse over the top part of the knob, we'll see it says engage manage speed mode and the arrow is pointing up. Now if I click this, it'll go to three dashes. What it's doing now is it the autopilot is automatically managing your speed so you don't even have to touch it. So we see this purple triangle here on our primary flight display. That is where the aircraft is going to try to hold the speed. So if I crank this knob down, you'll notice that nothing's changing. Now this is because, again, the autopilot is managing the speed for us. It recognizes that one, our flaps are up and our gear, and two, that we are above 10,000 feet, so we are able to go past 250 knots. Now if I press this knob down, you'll notice if I hold my mouse at the bottom of the knob, we have a down arrow, and it says engage selected airspeed mode. Now if I press that, that purple triangle goes away and it'll now try to manage whatever speed I have here. So I can crank this up and we'll see this cyan colored triangle. That's where the autopilot is going to try and hold it. So I could go up to 340 and now it's going to um, the it's going to try to go to 340. But if I decrease it again to 252, now it's slowing down. Or I can engage manage speed mode and that purple triangle pops right back up and the three dashes and the dot pop up. Alright, so that is speed hold. Also on the auto throttle, you need to make sure that your throttles are in the correct position, which is this right here. It's this little arrow that has CL beside it. That stands for climb. Notice if I bring the throttle down a little bit, well now auto throttle is no longer engaged and it says speed right here and we are slowing down. Now if I put the throttle back and you'll hear an audible click right there, that click, that first click, and now it switched to throttle climb. If I go all the way up, that's toga. And it'll continue to climb or it'll continue to increase in airspeed until I change it. So right after takeoff, in other words, you always want to bring this down to throttle climb and it will manage your speed for you. All right, so that is it on the speed hold and throttle hold. Next over, we have heading. Now, heading is really simple. It's pretty much the exact same as the speed hold. If I hold the mouse over the top of the knob, it's an up arrow, and this is manage speed, or heading mode, sorry. And if I hold it at the bottom, 
it's selected, which is what it's currently on. If I go to manage speed or heading hold, I don't know why I keep saying speed, you'll notice the plane is banking. This is because it has switched over to nav shown in this box right here. And it will keep circling or I mean it really it has nowhere to go because I have no flight plan put in so that's why I'm using managed heading hold to fly a straight line now again if I press this bottom on the bottom side of the knob it goes to selected heading mode and this is just like the speed so this line pops up that's where the aircraft is currently pointing and we have another cyan arrow at the top. Now if I crank this knob to the left, this arrow moves to the left, and therefore the aircraft moves to the left. Just like that. And if we have a flight plan in, which we are going to put one in uh, right now actually, I'm just going to simply go to Charlotte. Um, I'm going to use my Direct 2 button. Now if I press in Charlotte, KCLT, in my Direct 2, and then insert. Now we notice that um, if I engage the manage speed or heading hold, again I said speed, if I engage that, well now it's going to start banking straight towards Charlotte. And if I take it a step further and um, I'm just going to fill in this flight plan here. CLT. All right, and now if I go to destination arrival and I just input a random runway with a random star, insert it. All right, now we have a line that has popped up. And the autopilot is going to try and keep it on these lines. Now it's not going to because I did just enter direct to Charlotte. But the moral of the story is if you have a route input, like if you went to the world map and you selected a departure and an arrival, that is what the nav is going to do. It's going to keep you on route, on course, on that line. Alright, next over we have AP1, AP2, and auto throttle. Now auto throttle is automatically going to be lit up and if, if that's not on, I mean it's pretty obvious. Um, you know, it's not going to manage your speed for you, so make sure that's lit up. Autopilot 1 is what you have to engage in order to, you know, allow the aircraft to fly itself. And Autopilot 2 is kind of broken right now. I mean, Autopilot 2 is only used during landings in an Airbus, and it pretty much lands the entire plane by itself like you really don't even have to touch it but it is actually a current bug right now so I would not recommend using autopilot 2 right now if somebody would like to correct me in the comments if you have tried out autopilot 2 but I have not this button above it is in op so obviously we don't worry about that the next one over is altitude and this is very similar to speed and heading I have it set at 15,000 feet and if we click the up arrow, or like, you know, hold our mouse above the knob, we can engage managed altitude mode. And this again allows the MCDU and the aircraft to manage your altitude for you. So if I click that, nothing's going to happen. Now, again, nothing happens because I don't have a route put in. But if I click the down arrow of the knob, now we are in selected altitude mode and we can increase this and decrease this as we wish so let's say I wanted to go to 20,000 feet well I have selected altitude mode on so why isn't it climbing well this is because we actually have to hit the up arrow again and to engage the managed altitude mode so now once we increased it and over here it now says climb instead of just altitude see if I lower this back down to 15,000 feet then it switches back to alt and uh, I lowered it back down and I also pressed this up arrow now anytime you want to ascend or descend you do have to press this up arrow so if I wanted to go down to 10,000 feet and I press the up arrow now it switched to descent just like that 
Now, if I wanted to descend quickly and without the FMC or MCDU, I would press this down arrow and it switches to open descent. In other words, the aircraft is going to try and descend as quickly as it can. Alright, and yeah, I mean, that that's a bug. It's flailing out because the speed keeps dropping rapidly. Alright, anyway, next knob over is vertical speed. Now we can level off the aircraft by pressing the up arrow, so I'm going to do that. There we go, we just leveled it off. And this also switches to vertical speed. Or we can increase, so if I scroll up on it, now we're going to ascend at a thousand feet per minute. Um, actually, we have to hit this um, the down arrow. That's what the down arrow does after you set the vertical speed. Now our vertical speed says negative 1100. And the opposite holds true. And man, I wish these freaking stutters would stop. That is so annoying. So if I increase my vertical speed to like a thousand feet per minute and then press this down arrow, now we are ascending at a thousand feet per minute. So the ver vertical speed can be useful if you want to ascend or descend at a certain rate. All right, now some buttons under here. We have LOC. This is the localizer. This is what you turn on when you're performing an ILS landing so you're able to capture the localizer. Um, next we have this X EX PED button which doesn't even highlight so I mean I've never used it before. Next we have our APPR button which is the approach mode and that's what engages both your glide slope and localizer and allows you to come in for an ILS landing. I'll put the video in the top right corner to my ILS landing tutorial on this Airbus, if you would like to check that out. Alright, and uh, guys, as you can tell, we now have this line, finally, and this is leading us pretty much directly to Charlotte. Now, this is what I was talking about with the nav and heading, so currently nav is engaged, and we can tell that because it says nav at the top, and we have three dashes here, so everything's being managed except my altitude. Um, because I have vertical speed and now if I press the up arrow it'll go to descend and it will descend to 10,000 feet alright and if we go down to our MCDU with our flight plan we'll notice these numbers right over here these are the altitudes that we should be at so at JEDCO we should be at 8,000 feet and JEDCO is right here and then at Lurdy, we should be at 7,000 feet, first us 6,000 and so on and so forth. So with managed altitude mode on, the plane is automatically going to meet these altitude restrictions. So at Jedco, we should be at 9,000 feet or whatever it was, 8,000. And then the plane is going to start descending automatically to 7,000 for Lurdy and so on and so forth. So it's very useful, and you can kind of see what I mean whenever I said the autopilot in the Airbus is very automatic, and you really don't have to do much. Alright, so to wrap things up, if you, again, you can press these knobs in or out, and it depends on where your mouse is. We have managed modes, which is where the MCDU will take control of the aircraft and will manage your speed, your heading, altitude for you. Or you can go to selected by clicking the down arrow and changing it yourself. Same way with heading, I can change this heading as much as I would as much as I want. Or we can go to nav mode. Same way with altitude, if I increase it and press the up arrow, then we're going to switch to climb and it's going to get us to 15,000. But if I want to descend to 5,000 and press the up arrow, then it switches to descent. Or if I want to descend rapidly, I'll press the down arrow on 5,000 and it'll switch to open descent um, after I level off here. So if I go down to like 5,000 and press the down arrow, then it switches to open descent and the plane is going to try to descend quickly as possible. And you can think of it as flight level change. 
Or the opposite holds true. If we want to go to 15,000 feet and press the down arrow, then um, it should switch to open climb. I don't, I'm not sure why it didn't. Maybe it's because I wasn't on 10,000 feet. All right, so with altitude hold on, if I go up to 15,000 and then press it, now it switches to OP climb for a second, and it's going to try and climb as quickly as possible, just like flight level change. And with vertical speed, we can level off the aircraft by pressing the knob up, just like that. And we can, if we want to in go up, we'll set our vertical speed to like plus 2,000 feet per minute and press the down arrow, just like that. And it will now ascend at 2,000 feet per minute. Or, of course, the opposite is true. If we want to descend at 800 feet per minute and press the down arrow, now we are going to start descending. So, um, that's really all I can tell you with the autopilot. The best thing that I would do is actually, um, I would go into the game and fool around with the autopilot a little bit. Because, I'll be honest, whenever I first got the tallest A319 and X-Plane 11, um, the autopilot was a little confusing for me. But now I really understand it. The biggest thing that people don't understand is these knobs can go two different ways. And whichever way they are is what they will... Um, what they will perform and what they'll do. Alright, um, another autopilot feature that I guess is worth mentioning is this LS button beside this FD. And that is your info display for your ILS. So if you click that, you'll notice these dots came up. Well, this is your localizer and your glide slope. And I go over those in the ILS tutorial. I'll also leave the link to that in the description below. Alright guys, so that's really all there is to the autopilot. Um, just keep in mind that it is still very buggy. And wow, look at that. We actually have icing effects. I've never seen that. That's besides the point. Um, so yeah, we... There's not really that much to the autopilot in an Airbus. But um, it, it's really important for you to go in and practice with it and mess around and see what you can do with it. So that is going to do it for today's video, guys. Um, if I miss anything, please do leave a comment. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Or you can always join the Discord and I can get to you there. So um, keep a lookout for more Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 videos. Join the Discord if you wish. And if you're new to the channel, please do like and subscribe. And guys, keep a lookout for more live streams. I had one last night and it was very cool, very fun. And uh, alright, so that'll do it. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day.